The U.S. Representative introduces bill to end federal taxation on gold and silver. Today we will review the current IRS tax structure for precious metals and what the future will look like if this bill passes. Hi, and welcome to Minuteman Precious Metals, where it's my goal to enhance your financial preparation and prosperity and motivate you by tracking my personal stacking adventure. Thanks to all my new and returning viewers. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy today's content and ring that bell if you'd like to be alerted when new videos are available. I appreciate your views, but I really need your likes and subscriptions to grow this channel. Thank you for your support. On May 8th, 2024, U.S. Representative Alex Mooney of West Virginia reintroduced sound money legislation to remove all federal income taxation from gold and silver coins and bullion. The Monetary Metals Tax Neutrality Act, H.R. 8279, backed by the Sound Money Defense League, Money Metals Exchange, and free market activists, would clarify that the sale or exchange of precious metals, bullion, and coins are not to be included in capital gains, losses, or any other type of federal income calculations. Gold and silver will be treated as non-entity for tax purposes, putting it on par with the U.S. dollar. Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and Randy Weber from Texas joined as original co-sponsors. My view, which is backed by the language in the U.S. Constitution, is that the gold and silver coins are money and are legal tender, Representative Mooney said. If they're indeed U.S. money, it seems there should be no taxes on them at all. So why are we taxing these coins as collectibles? Acting unilaterally, Internal Revenue Service bureaucrats have placed gold and silver in the same collectibles category as artwork, Beanie Babies, and baseball cards, a classification that subjects the monetary metals to high long-term capital gain tax rate of 28 percent. Sound money activists have long pointed out it's inappropriate to apply any federal income tax regardless of the rate against the only kind of money named in the U.S. Constitution. And the IRS has never defended how its position squares up with current laws. Furthermore, the U.S. Mint continuously mints coins of gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, and gives each of these coins a legal tender value denominated in U.S. dollars. This formal status as U.S. money further underscores the unfairness of the IRS tax treatment. A tax-neutral measure, the Monetary Metals Tax Neutrality Act states that no gain or loss shall be recognized on the sale or exchange of, one, gold, silver, platinum, or palladium minted, and issued by the secretary at any time, or two, refined gold or silver bullion, coins, bars, rounds, or ingots, which were valued primarily based on their metal contents and not their form. Under current IRS policy, a taxpayer who sells his precious metals may end up with a capital gain in terms of Federal Reserve notes and must pay federal income taxes on this gain. But the capital gain is not necessarily a real gain. It's often a nominal gain that simply results from the inflation created by the Federal Reserve and the decline in Federal Reserve note purchasing power. Under Representative Mooney's bill, precious metals, both gains and losses, would not be included in any calculations of a taxpayer's federal taxable income. U.S. inflation is not caused by CEOs of grocery stores or by outside world leaders. It's called by the Federal Reserve and federal policy, said J.P. Cortez, executive director of the Sound Money Defense League. The federal government has a responsibility to remove disincentives for people seeking alternatives to the Federal Reserve notes to protect their savings. The IRS does not let taxpayers deduct the staggering capital losses they suffer when holding Federal Reserve notes over time, 
said Stefan Gleason, president of Money Metals Exchange, the U.S. company named Best Overall Precious Metal Dealer by Investopedia.com. So it's grossly unfair for the IRS to assess a capital gains tax when citizens hold gold and silver to protect them from the Fed's policy of current debasement. The Monetary Metals Tax Neutrality Act aligns with a broader national trend, with most states having already eliminated sales tax on the purchase of precious metals. State legislatures are increasingly introducing and approving measures to eliminate state income taxation of gold and silver. Alabama and Nebraska each passed their version of this policy this year. Arizona, Arkansas, and Utah approved similar measures in recent years. Iowa, Georgia, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas also considered income tax exemptions in 2024 with several approving the bills across multiple committees and chambers. Let me know your thoughts on both the federal and state taxation of precious metals. Do you feel that capital gains are fair to be taken by the federal government when we sell our precious metals? I'd love to hear your comments on this. Let's call it there. Thank you for watching and remember time is your most valuable asset and I appreciate you sharing yours with me. Minuteman 6, signing off.